What's up, folks? This week on the Wrestling Mayhem Show, it's business time. We talk about Tout, we talk about Matt Hardy, Kevin Nash, and their teeny tiny little brains, and a few other things. Saturday morning shows throughout history produced by WWE, Shawn Michaels' depreciation, and as always, we make sweet, sweet brain love with the fans. Stick around. Parental discretion is advised. Hey guys, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show, 332 live from Mayhem Studios here in Pittsburgh, PA. I'm the Master of Ceremonies, Sorgatron, back with you again. On the couch with me is, not with me, not I'm on the couch with him on the love seat, enjoying touching his lap, whatever. Chachi of InsertCoinToBegin.com, at Chachi says, how you doing, sir? I'm doing well. Um, I would just like to state that uh, never once on the show... Have I stated that I don't like wrestling or that I'm better than wrestling? Yes. Yes. And so if you happen to believe that fact, proceed to pull your head out of your ass and actually <laughs> listen to the show. And what does Frizz uh, from the deep nether regions, DJ Lunchbox... What's up, hot dogs? This is DJ Lunchbox coming to you live from a secret location with my uh, my robot friends behind me. I have been doing it all. I have been saying my prayers and eating my vitamins. I've been going on crazy Ultimate Warrior spiritual quests. I've been swimming in money like Ted DiBiase. All in preparation for tonight's wrestling fucking mayhem show. Time out. One question. One. You you've been eating you, you've been eating your vitamins and saying your prayers. Have you been ball deep in your daughter? <laughs> I don't have a daughter, so no. <laughs> and even if I did, uh, again, no. Okay, just there making sure. Join us from Corpus Christi, Texas, at least for one more week. Is uh, the, maybe, uh, maybe a couple more. <laughs> maybe a couple more. The wrestle fan. This guy right here. Hello, wrestling mayhem show fans. I am back. It is wrestling mayhem show night. I like Chachi. I like to say that I'm better than wrestling just because it helps my self esteem after, you know, doing one of these shows. Wrestle fan, you know what? I'm going to be nice to you all episode. Oh, man. Aww. It's a ruse. It's a swerve. Don't believe it. I, 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 I'll, I'll hold nope. you to that, Chachi. I, I'm going to. I'm not going to. I'm, I'm going to be extremely pleasant and treat you with the utmost respect. And also joining us from south of Pittsburgh here, he's a sound guy for RWA Wrestling. He's the Hot Wheels at Hot Wheels with a Z, RWA, on Twitter. How you doing? He's got a puppy. Yes, yes. See, I, I'm, I've am i been so used to watching um, the Mayhem puppy and WrestleFans puppy and Riz's puppy. I had to get my own. This is Renegade. Renny for short. Renegade? You like the WCW guy? No, he can wrestle or, better. Or like the uh, the USA Network show with uh, uh what's his name? Uh, Lamas, something Lamas. Uh, yeah, Lorenzo yeah, yeah. Lamas. I knew Lorenzo, what you're talking is about. That, is, that a show, is that a show about lawyers and suits? Because that's pretty much every USA no, show. No, it isn't. Come on, Burn Notice is a good show. <laughs> but it's about false. lawyers and suits. Still yeah, I was going to say false. Yeah, yeah. I totally what? agree. False. Nah, false. You guys. Hey, it's the rest of the mayhem show. Hi. Hi, this is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. You can check us out at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. We're on Twitter, at Mayhem Show. You can find us on iTunes, Blip, Roku, Stitcher, a bunch of other places. Just look up Wrestling Mayhem Show and your podcast delivery or video delivery device. Where you can also contact us directly at Good, Good Times! Good Times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or the hotline at 412-206-WMS0. That's 9670. Uh, we're on Facebook. We're on Google+. Plus. Join us in the conversation. We have a fantastic open group on Facebook. Please go. Uh, request to be added and uh, and join in the conversation. It's where a lot of the great stuff's happening. Uh, that and Google Hangouts, everything like that. Go check out WMS Gold. Links and extras for your iOS app store, Amazon app store for your Android devices. we got a great interview filling in, as we'll discover here shortly. Uh, a, a great interview LB did with Hot Wheels, actually, about what he's involved with in wrestling and everything, so go check that out. Only $1.99 on either of those platforms. Uh, go, so if, you, if you like this, we would be very humbled for you to put your money down and support the show and show us. Um, $1.99! $1.99! $1.99! Um, like I said, uh, we, we were scheduled 
If you're following the Twitter, Facebook, and everything, we were scheduled to talk with uh, Luke Gallows, uh, who is going to be showing uh, this Friday. So we'll put out a plug there for Phoenix Pro Wrestling in Johnstown, PA. I believe it's phoenixprowrestling.com if you want information on that. Uh, we'll probably mention a little bit more with it in the Indie Minute. Unfortunately, uh, there was a last-minute thing, uh, a, a snap to approval issue uh, with the interview. We did have a chance to talk to him. Uh, for a minute. Uh, so hopefully we can still do this, uh, but it won't be on this episode uh, that we know of right now. Um, you realize that we're going to have a bunch of people commenting on all these platforms saying that we just said that we had an interview with this guy to get them to listen <laughs> to the show. That's why we're profusely apologizing, sir. And don't <laughs> give them any ideas, please. I, I'm um, not giving them ideas. They were already in their minds. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah, maybe we should just have just like change. flyers Flyers and posters, cards subject to change. Or we, or we just say uh, we will be having an interview with a cardboard cardboard cutout of Luke Gallows. <laughs> AKA oh, Take your picture with him through the podcast. I, I don't know. Uh, no, but no, a uh, uh, nice gentleman we talked to a little bit, but uh, again, we were not able to do the interview at, uh, as of this, uh, where I'm recording this part of the show at least. Uh, so with that, we're going to get right into it. And nope, that's not the email I was looking for. Um, with with the fans, the fans first. LB, LB, you're a touter. Yeah, you're a touter. You like I'm a touter. To, I do a like touter. to tout. You, Every now and then, I've, I've, I've touted. I picked. I picked up. You. You had. I, I believe. I labeled this as a wrestling mayhem show song that you did recently. No. It's not working. No <laughs> wrestlingmayhemshow.com. As Is that it? <laughs> mayhem, it's the Mayhem Show. WrestlingMayhemShow.com There you go. That should be our intro now. Sorry, Basic. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and also, uh, also one with social media, uh, we did find out this week that WrestleFan finally made his bed. I did make my bed! <laughs> Yay! Bravo! Bravo! There you go. Uh, Thank you for and using that is a, Which I think, I'm not positive, but I think that's how you're supposed to use Instagram. Just tweet <laughs> random photos. <laughs> of exactly, exactly. I've been, Insta- I've been Instagramming a lot of random shit tonight, so... Interesting uh, cover there, WrestleFan. Cover. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Ladies. All right. Ladies. Ladies. This is where you could be, ladies. Um, and with that, we also have plenty of emails actually uh lb i think you want to cover this first one right i do yes uh is the music queued up this is great i mean it's great that this guy this guy started emailing us last week but we figured we, we upon e- uh we, we the presentation needed to be uh uh changed a little bit so we came we up with this up a little bit what's that we wanted to bump it up a little. Yeah, we did. We did. So we came up with this in the hangout last night. <laughs> okay. Title of the email is I think this show is great. <laughs> hey, Wrestling Mayhem Show. It's Phil at Big PPC. I wanted to review my rating for the show, saying I enjoyed 90% of the show. I will say that I enjoy the Remember When and Indie Minute segments the best the interviews are good as well i would say that the only thing that is really not too great is the small-minded comments from ed georgie says about not enjoy women wrestling or touting or being a fan of things that i monkeys riding dogs (laughs) hey hey whatever to each their own. I think that there is good women wrestling and wrestlers, they just don't get the time. Santino Morera is pathetic, and I had officially lost oh, and had officially lost to Antonio Cesaro twice, and that makes it time for Cesaro or Sandow to be the champ. Santino can play with the Cobra if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> He has made his bed, and now Santino must sleep in his loser bed. (laughs) (laughs) 
TNA wow. Hard Justice coming up this next weekend. I hope that the main event gets stipulations and three other matches have stipulation, so you would think that they would tweak the match with some sort of stipulation since it's, quote, hardcore justice. I, I would of... like to say that if to... I would like to say that if little to no Sting or Hogan involved, that their pay-per-view could be successful at not sucking the big one. Woo! <laughs> By the way, <laughs> woo! <laughs> In tribute to the new SmackDown GM, the five-time WCW champ and one-time world champion Booker T. I made my five five for the current moment. Number one, Daniel Bryan. Number two, CM Punk. Number three, Dolph Ziggler. Number four, Damian Sandow. And number five, Sheamus. Please do a five five with others on the show, you dig? In Booker T voice, you gotta love it. As well, favorite Booker T moment? I enjoyed when he debuted and helped Jericho beat Austin to be the first undisputed champion, and also when Stone Cold Steve Austin and Booker T had their fight in the grocery store. Classic! <laughs> How about you guys? Take it easy, Phil, at Big PPC. P.S. I am going to email more often. Please do. <laughs> Fantastic. All right, he had a couple <laughs> questions there. Oh, I can kill this music. Um, <laughs> Wait, hold on, hold on. So, so, hold on, stop. All right. Before, before we address <laughs> the email, <laughs> Will, Lunchbox, mm? can you do mm? me a favor and say stipulation with that <laughs> access of, accent a few more times? Stipulation. Matches going under stipulation make for interesting television on hardcore justice. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know where this guy's from. I have no idea, but just well, like be from Russia. I mean, I mean, <laughs> considering wrestle wrestle fan we thought was can from Canada. I think Mad Mike we thought was for a girl from God knows where originally. Uh, so yes, if 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 he he better be from Russia, and if he's not from Russia, he needs to move there right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Thank you, Phil. Uh, so to, uh, to that question, Fave Five. I don't know. Uh, Fave Five for me. I, I kind of agree with a lot of those guys. I, I go with uh, Brian Punk Ziggler, uh, not Sheamus, not Sandow. Really, Sh yeah. no. I, mean, um, I like I like you. I, some of you guys Sandow. like Sandow. Yeah, yeah. Um, I like I like and Damian Sandow. That I can get behind that. Seamus, I agree with you. I think he's about so sort of like watered down. Are we are we thing. based on what they're doing currently, or guys we'd like to see kind of step up too? No, I mean, I, I, like, I like like, am I wrong to throw Zack Ryder in there in a fave five? Probably. No, I don't think so. <laughs> no, it's your five favorite wrestlers on the show. So okay. whatever five wrestlers you want, and well, guys, that's, that's, I mean, that's the key point. Five favorite wrestlers on the show. Oh, then, 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 I'll go, I'll, then I'll go with those three, and I'll go with uh, Ryder and, and uh, Miz in the long run. So what about you, Josh? Uh, I'm going to go, because I agree with uh, Brian Punk Ziegler. Um, however, I'm going to go with Miz. Okay. And I'm going to go with um, Kofi. Okay. Wheels? Uh, I agree also with the <laughs> three. And Chachi's Miz. But I'm going to add a Tyson kid. There you go. There you go. Will uh, wrestle fan? Uh, I will say definitely. I think Brian would be number one, just from what you know the stuff he's been doing there. Miz, I agree. I definitely think he's improved. I'm going to still throw AJ in there, even though I do think her GM thing hasn't been as great as her other stuff. But god damn it, she's so cute. Um, <laughs> she's adorable. D uh, Damian Sandow, obviously, because he's doing amazing stuff. And I guess I'll throw in Antonio he's, Cesaro from the fact that he's been winning a lot and he's been sort of oh, getting yeah. his name out there to possibly, you know, maybe challenge Santino for the U.S. title or, you oh, know, yeah. whatever. I, I, on, on a Cesaro thing, I, I, I watched SmackDown through um, 
through YouTube. So they have those, uh, I, and I don't know if you guys see them if you watch them any other way, uh, but they have those packages for guys like, this is who Randy Orton thing, da 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 The package they have on Antonio Cesaro is amazing. Mm. Is is just tremendous. Go check that out if you have a chance. It, it's, uh, I believe, before his match with Santino on the YouTube feed. I believe it's also on the Hulu uh, feed as well. So, uh, did you finish? I'm sorry. No, yeah, I finished mine. All right, what about you, LB? Um, well, yeah, this uh, Punk and Ziggler definitely uh, are the top two right now. I am really enjoying what Daniel Bryan's doing. Uh, Jericho, I don't know what's going on with Jericho, but I'm a big fan. Yeah, yeah. And you know what? I still, uh, I don't really know for number five. <laughs> Let's say it changes. It changes constantly. I still have a soft spot for The Undertaker. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And you know what? I'm just going to throw in John Cena, because why the fuck not? Okay. I would just like to state that my list is in no particular order. Yeah, Yeah, and mine mine isn't either. Mine isn't either. Uh, From the chat room, Bobby says his is uh, CM Punk, Jericho, Ziggler, Sandow, Brian. Zero 2K says Brian, Punk, Ziggler, Rhodes, Sandow. So there's a lot of similarities, too. Uh, Yeah, Rhodes has been... He did did a little bit this week, so he's been around, at least. So uh, a little bit of a light moment for him. So uh, a favorite Booker T moment, I'm going to go with... Um, I, I would I would steal the uh, grocery store one initially uh, that that was in the email. But if I want to go a second, I want to go his best of uh, I believe it was a best of seven he did with Chris Benoit back in WCW. Mm. So I don't give a fuck. It's that one. <laughs> <laughs> Will who is who's Chris Benoit? Oh. Are you Will's? talking about Chris Ben underscore? Uh, my favorite moment with Booker T. Honestly, I'd have to say. Yeah, it was a stone cold moment, but my second one would definitely be. Have, I'd have to go with uh, when he is doing a interview in the back, and Eric Bischoff walked past for the first time. Yeah, and he just went, "Tell me, I did not just see that." Nice, Russell <laughs> fan. Uh, that time that Kurt Angle wanted to fuck his wife because he had jungle fever. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, I didn't even think about the King Booker thing. Oh, <laughs> I didn't even think Booker about the King, King, King Booker King thing. Booker. That was the best hands down all over on Booker T. I mean, I have the fucking poster from No No Mercy that year. Because it was so amazing. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, Chachi? I, I, you know, I have to go back to the beginning. Uh, any, any of the Harlem Heat moments. Okay. Um, I enjoyed that tag team. We coming for you, Ninja? Yeah. I, I enjoy that type that 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 tag team. Good, good. Uh, and uh, I'll be Hulk Hogan. We be coming for you, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> and it's down. There was a and visual. Down. There was a visual. I I thought you were going to say GI Bro or something. No, yeah. no. Oh, that, was that was a good moment. That was a good King time. Booker this, was this, just this. amazing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> With the pink, the pinky, the pinky. Oh. My King Booker, the world, the world famous San Francisco 49ers match from WCW. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's horrible! All right, we got a couple more emails from the Mayhemers actually uh, that could not be with us tonight. But I say that in such a way, uh, uh, Chachi. One of these That's you are the way. voice of. Bro. Um, but we'll skip the other one for the moment <laughs> to the other one while you get that prepared. Greetings, Mayhem crew. It's Mad Mike once again with your mail of mayhem. Okay, so it doesn't translate to text well, but my damn iPod doesn't feel like recording sound right now, hence this email. TNA was pretty pedestrian this week. They actually had a baby shower for Claire, the rapist, which which was really awful. The only bright spot of the entire segment was the prop of baby AJ Styles, which had the hood, by the way. Yeah, uh, it was <laughs> also nice to see uh, Shima and Kenny interacting with Aries and Rude at the beginning. Uh, that was also a nice... That was... That was also a nice bit of business, and really the only positive I can take away from TNA that wasn't a one-off joke. And Joseph Park telling Sting to stop kayfabing, his was uh, kayfabing him was priceless. It's kayfabing. Sorry, um, <laughs> that, that's exactly how they said it. Uh, SmackDown gave us a new GM uh, in Booker T. So in honor of that, the Mad Fact of the Week. Uh, from our friends at WrestlingData.com has to do with Booker T's tag partners. The most successful partner Booker has had is probably easy to guess, Stevie Ray. However, his least successful partner is 
Gold Dust, despite <laughs> them being way more entertaining than Harlem Heat. On to Raw, kind of boring show this week. Not looking forward to SummerSlam. If Triple H beats Slezer, uh, then his entire gimmick is ruined. So expects Trips to lose. Uh, is it weird? I'd almost rather see a Punk versus Lawler feud than anything to do with Cena and Show. <laughs> it looks like Del Rio and Sheamus are in a holding pattern until they decide that Randy has been punished enough or that Ray isn't going to break his leg and one of them gets <laughs> the belt. The only worthwhile thing for me on Raw was the use of... Uh, wrestlers using talent. Sheamus using it to further an angle during Raw is actually creative. Ditto for Jericho and Ziggler. Then again, I could watch three hours of Jericho and Ziggler just fucking with each other, and it'd be entertaining. Hmm. Uh, Before I sign off, the Mayhem Fantasy Football League has been set, and you fuckers need to sign up. No scandal this year, guys. Come on. Uh, <laughs> go to Yahoo and look for the Mayhem Fantasy Football ID number 356115. Be sure to DM at MadMike4883 for the password, unless Sork wants to announce it on the show. <laughs> I almost said it. <laughs> um, I'm not signing up. I left it open for 12 spots. So sign. And three have been filled, so so sign up. Yeah, go and DM, DM him if you want the password. We don't want yeah. uh, everybody or, or, to try to get message, in. Or message us at goodtimesofwrestlingnameshow.com. Yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll take care of it. Um, we just, Not signing up. We just want to make sure. Boycotting it. Okay, whatever. Boycotting. That, that we get the we get the message. Boycotting. We got, um, but yeah, yeah, just so, just so we can make sure, like, oh, let's get our spots and everything first. Uh, that one too. All right, the voice of Riz, go for it. All right, I gotta move the mic away from my face. Chocolate rain. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> WMS. As you can tell, I am not there to grace you with my presence. No, don't leave just yet. Just like I did on my first trip away from my humble abode to make New Jersey a better place, I come to the Mayhem Show bearing gifts and contributing the only way the Riz knows how. Remember last year when it was I who introduced the Mayhem Verse to the Angry Grandpa? Well, mm -hmm. last week, I believe I topped even myself with this viral video, but there's no, no video. link. Uh, let me see if it's in the email. There's there's no link. Right, oh, so the, <laughs> he forgot I, to send the link, apparently. It's, it's, oh, yeah. oh, oh, I see where it is. I actually have this in the notes. Okay. Okay. Um, go ahead with the, with okay. the email. I want to bring up the, the video. Thankfully, nobody was injured on this attack on the customer or the convenience store clerk. However, I will say this to Rey Mysterio and his clan of misfit ostriches. Your time on the run is just about over, because now you have my attention. I will look for you. I will find you. I will injure you so badly that you will have to be put on the stretcher. And then I will use you as a baseball bat and beat your misfit ostrich alliance to pals to a bloody mess of blood, guts, and ostrich poop. Have a good show, guys. Until next time, I don't condil condone killing innocent ostriches, just ones who rob convenience stores with wrestlers who can be used as weapons. Riz. Yeah, Sent from my iPhone because NJ has shitty internets. Yeah, and for those that are on audio, it's basically this video that's been floating around. Uh, it's been in our Facebook group. Um, it, it's, it's, like the, it's a security cam on a convenience store. There is an explosion of some sort, and Rey Mysterio runs in what we think is Rey Mysterio. For all intents and purposes, it looks like it's Rey Mysterio. Uh, runs in with uh, a bunch of ostriches and uh, bashes a guy's head off the counter and jumps on the counter and, and points at people. <laughs> what makes the hell? Make, make perfect sense. Right, I okay. Don't get, I, don't get what, I don't get why people are confused here. <laughs> So that's been going around, and uh, yeah, yeah. And for those, there's also a great other viral video going around with uh, Rob Van Dam helping Kurt Angle uh, to get into the Olympics. Oh, it's the funniest. That's Kurt Angle it's ever funny been. or die. Just just look up Kurt Angle Olymp Kurt Angle Olympics uh, <laughs> on, on video search, and it should it should be fine. And we also uh, got an email from someone who knows how to Google wrestling 
related websites. Oh? Uh, yes, uh, RF Video presents a special appearance. <laughs> no, 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 we're not giving the plug, come on. <laughs> oh, fuck that. Um, <laughs> well, they, they don't know how to use email, because they, uh, just emailed everyone everyone's address. Oh, no! Oh, no! <laughs> That's a, that's oh, a that's a fail. BCC. That's a BCC, guys. Come on. Uh, All if, right. you, if you were curious, uh, between the ropes, actual email address is <laughs> between the ropes at hotmail dot com. There you go. Well, I think th- I think that's that's a public address. So also, if you have if, also if your email is a hotmail account, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> hey, we live in the goddamn future. Come the fuck on. Get an Outlook dot com account. Come on. <laughs> hey, come on! I still have my MSN. Oh, email. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But I still have a Gmail account too. Though. Our friends didn't make the list. What? I said our friends didn't make the list. Our friends? Yeah. Oh, oh, no. No, well, we got the list, huh? No. Um, they're not there. There might be a reason for that. Um, anyways, and then the, we got some voicemails, of course. Uh, let me get into this here. Uh, first of all, one is from, well, you know what? Let, let's let him introduce himself. Woo! And I'm not in North Carolina right now. I'm in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Nope. He's been in North Carolina. Rivers, city of champions. City I call home. I don't live there anymore, so it's technically not home. But still, we're going with this. I don't know if any of you felt the swelling of this city. That was me and my giant penis inside of it. Hmm. <laughs> Just want to let you guys know I'm not dead. It's not dead. No. I wanted to watch the other night, and I couldn't. Because I was busy having three beers. <laughs> I watched Raw 1001. I wanted to make sure that my thoughts got out there. CM Punk is back to the old CM Punk. I appreciate that. Appreciate it greatly. I'm glad that he's come out and basically said, listen, you cocksuckers need to, you know, knock it the fuck off. I'm the actual champion. I have the big, giant, retarded-looking belt. And you will show me some goddamn respect. <laughs> I love that. I want him to be that CM Punk. That was awesome, CM Punk. Not the parroting, you're a loser. John Laurinaitis is CM Punk. <laughs> In the end of the day... His, his, uh, the summer of punk thing only panned out for Zack Ryder and Daniel Bryan to a lesser extent. Bryan was champion but got jobbed at WrestleMania, so eh, we can only give him so much. So I just want to let you know, Wrestling Mayhem Nation, nay, continent, Bo Diggity will always be here. Bo Diggity will always tell you the truth. He will tell you what people will be a fuckhead. Right now, everybody's a fuckhead. <laughs> all I want to do, apparently, the continue to be the greatest of all time. Sorry. And I appreciate when random people email in and say woo, even though they're not in North Carolina. Bo Diggity appreciates that. It's you, Phil. <laughs> I'm letting you know audibly. Bo Diggity appreciates you. Phil? Yeah, I was paying attention. Even though your grammar is in some sort of broken Russian. I still appreciate it. I appreciate you. So I'll let you know Bo Diggity isn't going anywhere. He will always be here. Okay, I think he just kind of... I'm not on the show. No. For whatever reason. Some reason. Bo Diggity's in your heart. Right there. Part of your heart that's telling you to be a champion and not such a fucking bitch. That's what Bo Diggity tells you. Bo Diggity's going to dip here and let Freaky get mad about TNA or something and talk about Skyrim. Bo Diggity. There you go. There you go. There, Bo Diggity joining us again. Actually, AJ does show up on Awesome Cast 113 that we just recorded earlier tonight. Uh, so go check that out if you want to get your Bo Diggity. Hey, what, what, Bo what? Diggity shows up where the fuck Bo Diggity wants to. That's right, he does. Because he's right, he Bo does. fucking Diggity. All right, we got one from Freaky here. Oh, yeah. Apparently, yeah. the content I've been giving you has not been up to Mayhem Show quality. So, I really <laughs> thought about it. All right. And I have a topic that is completely relevant to you guys. Okay. Much on the show, if at all. What? But uh, the NWA now has new leadership. 
who? <laughs> and the new leadership in the NWA has a vision to reignite the NWA brand. And part of that vision is television. Ooh! Now, <laughs> Sorgatron Media... Yes! ...does, uh, does um, footage for IWC and RWA as well as they can do, you, uh, provide for, for media promotions. Holy correct? shit! That, that's the we, rumor. Wouldn't we do that video? That a um, new NWA promotion would need local television production a promotion department that knows the area? The question is... Knows the area. Is Sargatron Media prepared for that kind of the challenge? Challenge? The challenge that obviously has been challenge. offered to Sargatron uh, yo, Media. Yo, 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 I don't know <laughs> what the latest thing is with NWA, but I know, I know, like, the more I hear about NWA, there's people in the NWA that may be leaving the NWA... What the fuck is the NWA anymore? Their NWA yeah. Hollywood uh, uh, stuff and website has got no fucking traction. They're on fucking, what, Colorist TV or something last I knew when I had cable. The NBA... Uh, the, the NBA? Yeah, yeah the fuck NBA. the NBA, too. No, the NWA <laughs> is, like, the most irrelevant organization in pro wrestling today. I'm sorry. It, I don't see it. And I don't know what this new... Oh, they're doing television. Hey, you That's a new concept. <laughs> Vince figured it out 30 years ago, and look where he is. Fuck you! Hey, what's your problem? I don't. Well, first off, awesome. first off, um, when did we start doing video? I know, right? When uh, did we start doing anything for television? I mean, uh, yeah. I, um, number two, I don't know. I think I think there might be a certain program going on on Sports Time Ohio. I might be involved with, but that's not a Storytron Media. No, thing, we don't. But, uh, no, we, we make, don't have the equipment to do television. No, I'm sorry. I, whatever this challenge is or anything, you know, the challenge is with television. Um, it's, it's too limited, you know, um, I, I, this ring of honor, uh, situation with, uh, Sinclair, uh, is a very old school approach to things. I think it's working for them a little bit, but I think it's a little too little too late. Uh, I think, I think, uh, if you look at any, uh, indie promotion, looking at television again, it's only so much it, it's, um, if you do it right, you can get more out of the internet than you can television. And unfortunately, uh, people are looking at television as as that old school way because res they, they think of wrestling booking in that old school way. Um, I can't say that you know it, it won't help at all, but you know uh, you got to do it right. And, I, and I'm sorry, anybody that that I hear is going into television in any indie promotion doesn't. That, that's a weird sound that's going on right now. Um, we'll find out what that is in a moment. Uh, <laughs> any indie promotion that's trying to get on tel television is not taking the proper reservations with it, is my problem with it. And I don't know what the fuck the NWA is doing. If they're doing a real TV deal where they're getting something national or something like that, okay, great for them, you know. But I just I just don't see I just don't see it. Um, I mean, just honestly, just my, I mean, so like, wait, 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 hold on a second, guys. Hold on a second, guys. All right, wheels, go, go ahead. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. What I was going to say was, I mean, I agree with you. It's, TV is the two big company, well, three companies on there right now. We'd get any company like RWA, PWX, IWC, any of these ones out of those areas. Oh no! Oh no! no. There but, well, well, wait. What I'm going to say is the DVDs and social media of the YouTubes, the all that other kind of outlets, the Justin TVs, is a good thing to do because it can get out there a little bit more yeah. than the TV. And that's where the dedicated wrestling fans are. I guess if you want like more of the general audience, which yeah, that's going to be a lot of your paying fan, I guess uh, that works. But it just you can't. You know, you you can't you can't take something like RWA IWC uh, that that's you know without some production value. You know, uh, if you're still doing you know no slight against RWA, but you're still doing a show where it's 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 obviously you're in an old gymnasium. It's not right. going to look good on TV, and it's going to be the same problem that you always have with indies, where somebody sees an indie because I know I know that was that's still a talk. Like even when we had the boost, somebody saw this as an indie. Like I heard it from Virgil all for fucking weekend. Uh, if you're in the <laughs> indies, you're not really into wrestling. You're not really 
you know, anything worth paying attention to. And if you see a basketball hoop in the background and you're you got a, I don't know, a Sunday night spot on WBGN here locally, it's not it's going to be harder to get more people into it because you look mm-hmm. second, third, fifth rate compared to WWE these days. And that's right. who your competition is. If you go to TV, if you're yep. sought out on the Internet, you're not expected. Yes, you are competing with those values because you're on Roku boxes that are hooked up to TVs. You're on YouTube that's hooked up through my Xbox now. Um, but there's not that expectation. And you can, uh, you know, the old ECW model, play to your strengths, you know. So right. uh, I think, respect. and also if you're, you know, if you're a TV show, like if you, like say RWA would get on TV or IWC, it's only going to make a dent in the local area. Yeah, yeah. And honestly, I, the only thing that I can think that would make a dent in is that maybe more people would come to your shows because, oh, maybe I could also watch myself on, you know, on TV every, how, you know, however yeah, many yeah. times you're on TV. That's, that's the only debt you're going to make. Yeah. I don't think there's any, any real, you know, pr- getting out of it with, you know, TV. Mm-hmm. I think, it, you know, more of the internet stuff and transferring that to people buying DVDs is what's going to, you know, mm-hmm. invigorate your company. Exactly. And the NWA, I mean, fuck, they, they don't yeah, need television yeah. to, be doing better. They need a whole product Wait. redo. <clears throat> I got it. You want to make a splash? Here's how you do it. All right? <laughs> Monkey. Oh, I reinflated him. I brought him back to life. I brought him back to life. I brought the monkey. I can reboot him. Na, 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 na. Um, <laughs> your point. <laughs> uh, let's release RWA and IWC. Ready for this? On tout. 15 seconds of time of every match? Yes. What? Get, I yelled at, oh, dude, I just got a brainstorm on that. Okay, we're going right, to hold on to that after the show. No, we do like a match highlight, you know? Like, let's do a highlight from each match on tab or something. Oh, that's, that's, that, that could be fun. Okay, no, no, no. We're, that's, yeah, that's something for exactly. after the show. Um, this is this is coming from someone who thinks he's better than wrestling and uh, hates everything. Except and including and you hate Toe. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Hey, the wrestling fans are there, so that makes sense. All right, we're going to have a new experiment this week. Look Thanks for that. giving me some more work. Look at that. All right, we got one more from Freaky. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is it. Okay, I've got some more killer content for you. Yeah, killer content. Intense wrestling Woo. has been putting out statements like they are the most intense wrestling in the United States. Okay. Um, best wrestling in the United States has been bantied about. Best wrestling. Now, considering how close people from the Mayhem show are to IWC, this would seem like fighting words. Fighting words. Can we get a, um, um, a little comparison going? Uh, Who is uh, the superior wrestling company? Superior so, wrestling so company. Me, Took my me, headphones take, off. Well, hold on, hold on. Let me take this. Let me take this. All right, all right. All right. What do you got, Russell fan? And I, I'm not done? really going to discuss the second question, or the the question at the end. I like AIW. I like IWC. They're both great products. You know, I'm not going to choose which I like better. They're two, and honestly, they're a bit different products, so it's hard. It's hard to make a comparison. You're commenting about AIW, saying that they are the most intense group in the United States are the best wrestling in the United States. Every company is going to say that. Yeah, yeah. It's not it's not and it's not against I'm not I'm not saying they shouldn't say that. Every company is going to say that. Yeah. And I'm gonna tell you why. No company wants to be number two. Why would they advertise themselves as number two or number three or number four? Because if you advertise yourself as that why would I pick your product over the product that is number one or number two? Hi, we're the IWC and we're uh, mediocre. Come see our shows. You know, yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't it, work it, for me, you know? Um, and that's not how they're going to promote it. They're like, we're the best wrestling you're going to get. You know, RWA is going to be like, we're, we're the best wrestling you're going to get. You there's, know? There's and, and they both, have, and they both have their that, pluses. There the, are promotions everywhere that may even have like 10 people that come to their events. And they say that they're the best wrestling in the in the state or in the, you know, whatever. But they say that because nobody is going to say that our product is less than another product. No, no. Yeah. And that that applies to wrestling. That applies to any business. 
you know, it's it's not it's not that difficult. So if you're you if you're gonna say, oh well, they're, well, if you really want to say they're the best in the world, like you can't be making those comparisons. Yeah, and it's 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 competition. It's nothing. They're mostly probably comp- comp- competitioning uh, against the people up there in Cleveland. I, I don't think there's a big national plan there for AIW. Uh, but that's mostly a thing against like probably Prime Wrestling or what I I don't know I think there's some other groups up there uh, Re- Remix I think is pretty close to Marietta. Um, I mean it's it's not even no it's not even anything like that so uh, um, it's a non-factor it really is it, yeah that's a non-factor to like compare that to IWC when one's in Pennsylvania one's in Ohio yeah yeah I mean if you're talking nationally okay I mean which is I know they're saying that but. And honestly, I haven't seen AIW for a while. The DVDs I've seen are a couple of years old, probably like 2010 at the latest. And I understand that I, I actually, and I, I actually you, got, you have. I have got to watch one of their recent shows. And i got to say, they do put on amazing shows, and they yeah, have definitely yeah. improved. And, and well, I, I wasn't a huge fan of their DVDs a few years ago, production-wise, but you say they're be, they've been getting better. Yeah, yeah, I remember you did show me a DVD of theirs from the past, which wasn't as top notch no, they no. haven't they have improved definitely on their quality it's it's not like you know amazing production value but it's on the quality of an indie company where they need to be mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and and really i mean with any any company like that that's doing production like it's gonna be better the longer they're around you know i mean I, there, there's a few older iwc dvds that i know i had a hand with you know several years ago that i still kind of shake my head at you know uh, just because you know we're learning on a fly, or something goes wrong, it's it's live production. It gets interesting. Um, yeah. So there's that. Wait, so, hold on. Oh, I have a question for Russell fan. Yes. Mm-hmm. Based on the statement that you just made about no one admitting to being less than the best, would you go on the record and say that you have the best Instagram feed on the internet? I, do you want me to answer that legitimately, or? <laughs> <laughs> and now I, I won't follow I, I, Instagram. I, that's, that's not, and, and you can't really compare that because I'm not. I marketing know. I, I'm just. I'm just messing with you. I know. I know. <laughs> I, I, okay. I just wanted you to. In that, case, in that case, yes, no one matches me. I just wanted you to drop a promo on you having the best Instagram on the internet. I have the best <laughs> health. There you best go. Instagram there you go. He does. Um, and uh, from the chat room, Sierra Two K has been talking. Uh, he says he says uh, on the TV side, any exposure is good exposure for indie promotions. I agree with that. I do agree with that. Um, I just you know is the money uh, put it, 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 like like I've seen with a client that's not wrestling, uh, they're finding that the money is better spent with internet promotion than with television just because of the cost factor. But that could be a different thing. Uh, well, I, there, I'll I'll say. Uh, and I wouldn't say any exposure because bad exposure probably isn't that good. <laughs> if you're if you're on your on the you aren't getting booked uh, uh, Facebook page, then no, <laughs> it's not good exposure. Five dollar wrestling, you know. Uh, if he's talking about NWA Hollywood, it's not bad, but it's just like another indie, really. Uh, it's not even a shadow of what NWA, NWA was. Uh, but if they can get on TV, it's good. Just don't think that it will be at uh, any level with WWE or TNA, uh, mm-hmm. not even ROH. And he, he needs, needs subtitles, subtitles for this? I don't know. For I, Freaky's voice. Oh, I see. I see. <laughs> There's a lot of yelling going on. All right. And with, we that, the Google voice ones. and with that, let's go to Amateur Falling Down with your Indie Minute. Indie Minute. Da, da, okay. Da. Well, uh, first, I actually will mention uh, AIW Wrestling because they had a big event this past weekend, their Girls' Night Out event, which is their all-female wrestling event. Amazing uh, amazing stuff I heard um, in the main event in a steel cage match between Allison Kay and Mia Yim. Um, and hopefully their DVD for that event will be out soon on SmartMarkVideo.com. Uh, go check that out. And uh, SmartMarkVideo.com, also SmartMark Video On Demand. Also, they revamped uh, SmartMarkVideo.com, their website. It's actually I actually like it. It's easier to navigate and it's, you know, it does look easier. a lot better. It, it, does. it looks much Ooh. better. Uh, I would highly suggest uh, for a lot of companies that are in there, there are a lot of great stuff on there from Chikara, CZW, AIW, ACW, uh, smartmarkvideo.com. I would suggest you go there and uh, mm-hmm. go buy some stuff. There is, like like uh, they're showing right there, there's a new Chris Hero uh, shoot interview slash best of DVD they have out, which actually sounds really interesting. Um, so uh, I, would, I would definitely check them out so if you want to get Interviews some- with a hero. There's actually two editions they're selling. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so definitely go to smartmarkvideo.com and go support them. The next thing I want to mention is um, our good friends at Phoenix Pro Wrestling, uh, the former 
um, uh, the former uh, promotion Johnstown Reinvigorated. Uh, they have an event coming up August 10th uh, in Johnstown, PA at the Masonic, the Masonic Temple uh, for the Grand, I believe the event is called the Grand Tempest. Uh, from according to this flyer, uh, including uh, Luke Gallows, uh, who we were supposed to have on the Mayhem show this week, but he will be at that event in Johnstown, PA. Uh, there's going to be a lot of great uh, local wrestling. Uh, Bobby points uh, out. Uh, Bobby points out they are separate from AON. There, there's no relations there. Separate. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, but a lot of AON talent uh, working there. Um, so I would definitely encourage you to go check that out at the Masonic Temple in Johnstown, PA. Can we uh, mention? So- uh, I, I'm sorry, I didn't know if you were going into it. Uh, there's a great video that was posted on the Mayhem Show uh, of Luke Gallows receiving a letter from Manchild inviting him uh, to beat down the bullies. So uh, uh, please go check that out. There's, uh, a, there's also the video of Manchild writing said letter. And is it's there? Pretty, yeah, and yes, it's pretty hilarious. Awesome. awesome. I, I, and I actually had a chance. Um, I, I know I'm really weird about like talking with promotions that don't have DVDs. Uh, they were new promotion and again kind of born out of i really enjoyed their promos leading into it uh actually did get a chance to talk with the guys that uh, i guess are going to be working on uh their dvd products so keep an eye out that they will be uh from what i hear uh well from what i understand uh doing dvds in the near future i can't wait to see you know what's going on there and i know there's some uh friends of the show uh the power slaughterhouse from iwc is part of it uh johnny axe has been a part of it in the past so uh and of course luke gallows uh so uh Keep an eye out for that. Uh, PhoenixProWrestling.com, I believe, is the site. I believe so, yeah. And you could also check out their Facebook page. Um, yep. If you search Phoenix Pro Wrestling, uh, definitely go check them out. Uh, general admission, $10 for that event, August 10th. Go check them out. Uh, then we'll, uh, next on the Indie Minute, I'm going to talk about our good friends at Renegade Wrestling Alliance. Uh, Sorgatron Media will be there uh, for their next event, uh, Saturday, August 11th, uh, for Aggression 4. Um, looks like a very uh, interesting card. Uh, Jimmy Nuts uh, go- facing off against Joseph Brooks. Um, we have a grudge match between Ashton Amherst and Patrick Kane's taking on Cato and Calvin McGrath. Uh, a lot of interesting uh, different matches. Uh, like I mentioned, Sorgatron Media will be in attendance. It's in uh, West Newton, PA, uh, if you want to go check that out. If you want more information, you can go to rwalive.com uh, and go check out some really good wrestling in the West Newton area. Uh, like I said, Sorgatron Media will be there. Hot Reels will be there um, in the DJ booth. Um, so you can definitely go uh, check them out, uh, like I said, at rwalive.com for more information on them. And hopefully it will be a really great event. Um, and the next, or go ahead, sir. Oh, I was just saying, excellent, excellent. Oh, uh, excellent. Okay. Uh, we, we always, I want to give you a chance. Is there anything uh, uh, specific out there you're looking forward to that we can uh, look for? Uh, honestly, um, I saw that you posted up the site. I was just looking at it because I also do the website. <laughs> so uh, there will be a return to RWA this weekend. Uh, the solution, Scott Fowler, who has been missing out of action for about a year. And he'll be making his return. We don't know what he's going to be doing, why he's going to be there, how long he's going to be there. But it should be interesting. He's a great talent that's been there before. Mm -hmm. So I look forward to seeing him back. And if you're curious on the site, there are a lot of videos, uh, interviews with Jock Sampson uh, by one of their uh, guys, Church, who has been doing a fantastic job. Did I talk about Church on here yet? No, no, Twitter. you haven't. I have not. I because I was really. He told me he was talking to me before the show, telling me what he was going to do. So he's. Uh, I, I think it's. I. I. I'll find it. You can probably see me conversing with him this weekend. Uh, but he he's been taking pictures of the fans at RWA and like doing like a people of RWA on Twitter with them, and just like just just blasting the fans of RWA on there. I, I think it's mm-hmm. tremendous. I, I mean. It is tremendous, and he's tweeting throughout the entire show and everything. So go follow him, and uh, somebody should plug that on the site. I think a little more. Um, yeah, I think it's on there. Also, uh, do, also somebody yeah. spamming your Twitter. Just want to put that out there. There's a lot of hey, Japanese. There's a lot of Japanese stuff in your Twitter feed. Um, so go check that out. RWALive.com. It should be a fun show. What we got next, Mister Wrestle Fan? Next on the Indie Minute, we transition from PA down a little bit south. Uh, not to my dick, because that's what I'm pointing to. Ladies. Um, <laughs> uh, we transitioned to Texas, um, <laughs> because uh, Anarchy Championship Wrestling, our friends over there, had a great event uh, this past weekend in San Antonio for Fall for Grace 2012, um, with a lot of great stuff, including the final San Antonio appearance of Jerry Lynn in his retirement tour, um, where he took on one man, Mike Dell, in a great match. Um, their next event is uh, two weeks, uh, I believe, a uh, week and a half, I think, I guess, 
um, from now in Austin, Texas at the Mohawk uh, for distrust, dismay, and antisocial behavior. Yes, very, awesome. <laughs> very long name, but very still there. It sounds like a good time. Uh, um, a lot of big names there. Um, Christina Von Erie, who we saw compete at the uh, Queen of Queens tournament, former TNA knockout um, and uh, big star in the Indies, will be returning to ACW. Uh, a lot of great stuff, including uh, Eric Cannon up from the Midwest area coming down uh, for his return to ACW. Hmm. You can get to see a lot of great talent. Uh, ACH, uh, Rachel Summer in front of the show, Portia Perez. Um, a lot of great talent will be there, and um, I would definitely encourage you to go check that out. That's August 19th at the Mohawk in uh, Austin, Texas, 912 Red River Street. Um, you can get your tickets at ARKChampionshipWrestling.com and uh, get more information of that promotion there. Um, and <clears throat> the final thing I want to note on the Indie Minute, uh, in an update from a story that we uh, talked about last week on the Indie Minute that was sort of being passed around and uh, is getting more traction now, um, we mentioned last week about the controversy that was surrounding the uh, Davey Richards, Kyle O'Reilly, and Tony Kazina uh, issue in Iowa, um, where apparently they had uh, taken some money from a promoter and had, I guess, walked out on them. Uh, reports of uh, a lot of similar stories from other promoters. Um, and in an update, the money was apparently sent back to the promoter through a PayPal uh, sort of agreement. Uh, I think we mentioned last week how O'Reilly kind of issued an apology that uh, sort of what they did wasn't right. However, um, Davey Richards and Ka uh, Tony Kazina uh, have been vocal for the first time uh, about the incident recently. Uh, not only that, but in a promo on their uh, Team Ambition YouTube uh, page, uh, which includes Davey Richards, Tony Kazina, and one of their students uh, or their trainees, uh, Darren Dean, um, kind of cutting a promo sort of... Uh, in, 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 in most terms, poking fun at the incident uh, and poking fun at the incident with the promoter and also the incident of uh, Tony Kazina, apparently, uh, where he apparently had choked out a student and, start, and sort of shot on him in the ring. Uh, they have apparently renamed themselves uh, Wrestling's Most Wanted, um, their group uh, from Team Ambition to Wrestling's Most Wanted over this recent controversy. And it's going to be... Uh, interesting to see how that develops. A lot of the uh, feedback from fans has been very negative um, on the video, so it's going to be interesting to see what comes of that. Um, it seems like they're taking an interesting turn, kind of. And the interesting thing to note: uh, Richards, Kazina, and uh, one of their trainees was in the very uh, in the video. Kyra O'Reilly nowhere to be found in the video, so it's unsure what's to uh, what's to come of that. Uh, hopefully. Hopefully something more will come. Also, apparently High Spots, uh, High Spots, very uh, intriguingly on the ball. They released the Kenny King Brett Titus shoot interview right after Kenny King's release from Ring of Honor, and apparently they're also coming out with a Davy Richards shoot interview that's very intriguing and very, uh, I guess, eye opening um, to a lot of stuff going on. So uh, if you want more information, on that I would say go to HighSpots.com and uh, check that out. I believe they have a trailer up for that DVD already. Um, but if there's more information to come from this story, uh, we will be looking to uh, update you here on the Indie Minute. Yeah, uh, and I'm, I'm over it. <laughs> yeah. These guys are dicks. I think, I, Moving I on. Don't book them. You yeah. know. I think a lot of people are the same. A lot of people feel the same way. Um, so, yeah. And uh, that is all I have for this week's Indie Minute. There you go. And with that, we got a new video presentation here by Mr. Lunchbox. Uh, would you like to introduce him, sir? Sure. It's uh, serendipitous that Mad Mike didn't was unable to send in a, a Minute of Mayhem this week uh, because the last time he couldn't do it, he was in the studio. So I did it instead. Well, folks, uh, I'm hoping to start a new thing here on the Wrestling Mayhem show. I'm hoping to release either a video or a column each week, uh, perhaps alternating back and forth because each one is hard work in a different way. This week was video week. Um, I recorded it, I posted it on YouTube, and you, you, my friends, get an exclusive first look at it uh, before I post it on the WrestlingMayhemShow.com tomorrow. Here it is. Check it out. Enjoy. What's up, hot dogs? Raw got you down? AJ's less crazy and therefore less activities, leaving you somehow unfulfilled? Ryback giving you rug burn? No worries. DJ Lunchbox is here to give you a boost out of your pit of wrestling despair. Welcome to this week's Listing with Lunchbox. During an autograph
contract signing at FCW, The Undertaker implied he won't be making WrestleMania this year. What do you think? Does the dead man deserve a day off, or is it just not WrestleMania without me and Mark? This week, WWE diva Rosa Mendez was allegedly assaulted by her ex-fiancé Jackson Andrews. We wish her a speedy recovery, both physical and mental. Wade Barrett's coming back. Where I come from, an onslaught of fury is the only way to survive. Survival leads to escape. But with escape, calloused souls soften and you become vulnerable. When the fire inside you burns out, you have to go back into the abyss to reignite the flame. I am Wade Barrett, and my barrage has just begun. past two years, Vince and Linda McMahon have lost around $5 million due to declining WWE stock. I have no joke for that. CM Punk is sort of a heel now. AJ is just a heel now. Randy Orton is back. <laughs> Rey Mysterio is also back. <coughs> <coughs> Monkey Rodeo. Well, you can't see what I'm eating, but I'm eating a chicken, hot chicken wing. So that is racist. No, it isn't. <laughs> I'm black and I like chicken. I just can't live uh. without you. Rest oh no, everyone comes disappeared. Back. Nope, I'm You here. can blame it all on me. Alright, you guys talk. I'm gonna go jerk off on a raccoon. And you liked it as a, ch okay, as a child? Okay, I can't anyone. Was it something more of an adult thing? <clears throat> uh, I'd say about teenager. It was like 1980. Wrestling Mayhem Show fans, this is the Wrestle Fan. We are back here on the Wrestling Mayhem Show, and it's time for a little segment that we like to call Number One. This week on the Remember When, we had a uh, Monday Night Raw last night. It was a very special night because it was in San Antonio, Texas. Not just because I love San Antonio, Texas, and that's where I'm Liar. pretty much from, but it was Shawn Michaels Appreciation Night, um, which is something that we would make up, which, thanks, WWE. Um, so, yeah, it was Shawn Michaels Appreciation Night. Um, you know, and for those that saw um, after Apparently Raw, they had a nice little ceremony for Shawn Michaels with Vince McMahon, The Undertaker, a couple different people. Um, so I took to the Facebook page, uh, a Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook group, uh, and asked people what their favorite Shawn Michaels memory was. Uh, and I'll introduce it with mine. And this is a story that I have brought up before. Because uh, it also relates to the first time that uh, I ever watched, uh, like, sat down and legitimately like watched professional wrestling. Uh, and that goes back to WWE Raw in 2002. Uh, and at that time uh, was the big uh, SummerSlam feud between Triple H and Shawn Michaels, um, which was a very interesting stuff. I remember uh, the whole incident where I think like Shawn Michaels was like run over by a car or something. Um, and then Triple H was talking about how he was going to find the person that did it. And then with, like, stealthy camera work, uh, 
uh, security camera work, they found out it was Triple H, and then it was it, and it led to the match that I had at SummerSlam, which was an amazing uh, encounter. Uh, and never seeing Shawn Michaels before, um, there was something about him. I will say from the first time watching him, he had the ability to truly carry himself on the microphone. Uh, something that was really unmatched, I think. Um, but from the fact that you know he wasn't. Uh, really that jacked up he wasn't that guy that was big and muscular you know and that he was in many ways the underdog in a lot of cases um but his mic work and his ability to uh carry himself on the mic really um allowed him to sort of become a star in wwe he sort of you know oh it was overlooked from the fact that they're you know he was not that big of a guy but his character and his charisma and everything made you get behind and made you believe that he could do what he said uh, he was going to do. And I loved that match with him and Triple H at SummerSlam. It was a bloody encounter that was just had so much tension behind it. And it was really, honestly, a really amazing match. And it got me into uh, pro wrestling. So that definitely says something right there. Um, like I mentioned, we took to the Facebook page and um, uh, asked people what their favorite uh, Shawn Michaels memory was. First one comes from Sorgatron. Hi. Uh, who mentioned uh, versus El Matador WrestleMania Nine? That's right. That's right. <laughs> Jack did elaborate a bit on that. Not afraid to say that. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, Big Freaky uh, mentions uh, for his first WWF show. Oh wait, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's my noise every time uh, Big Freaky does anything because I no longer care. Uh, he yeah. he mentioned it's so relaxed, so oh, relaxed. I'm, yeah, I'm good. Um, first WWF show was uh, HBK versus Sid Struthers uh, in June of 1995. Uh, we have some more here. Uh, Anthony Disler uh, said when he won the WWF Championship at Survivor Series in Montreal. Dot 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 dot. What? <laughs> um. Uh, friend, uh, former uh, co-host, uh, one Mayhem Missy commented, uh, saying WrestleMania 12, hands down, I cried with him, smiley face. Um, I think definitely that was <laughs> that had to have been a big moment for her. I know she was a very huge uh, Shawn Michaels fan. Um, uh, friend of the show, Justin Biznet from ACW, uh, mentioned that his retirement match versus Venom. That's okay. Very appropriate. Uh, uh, Zach Rizza, or, or the Riz, I, I don't know why I said it, why I said that name. You were reading it. Kayfabe, you're, you're K-fabbing, I, I, you're I, K-fabbing. I see, I am so sorry. Um, he says, kicking that little girl, dot, 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 Marty Jannetty. <laughs> I giggled. Um, uh, Bobby of J-Town <laughs> said, the whole HBK versus, uh, Chris Jericho feud, amazing television. Uh, Antonio Garza mentioned the uh, 2003-2004 feud with uh, Triple H, which kind of goes with what I was saying, definitely. Um, and let's see, I think, oh no, that's the rest of them, or is them just yelling at me? Okay. Yep, yep. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. That's what it okay. all turns into. But uh, we all had a you know, great Shawn Michaels and everything. Those, the, uh, everyone on the show that wasn't uh, contributed to the, uh, uh, the Facebook post, what, do, what were your favorite uh, Michaels memories? Uh, there was a time. Oh. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there was a time where I was just bored with wrestling. I was watching out of habit. Just week in and week in. I was like, uh, Randy Orton. Blah, Randy <laughs> Mysterio, blah, blah. <laughs> and then <clears throat> something happened. Um, Shawn Michaels had um, this feud with Chris Jericho it wasn't the old one, the one that he had the match at WrestleMania. It was the more recent one where Je- where uh, Shawn Michaels' wife got punched in the mush. And <laughs> this feud, the matches they had, just blew me away because it was it was so uh, innovative and different in a time where I thought I everything had been done in wrestling. Wrestling, and that WWE was just recycling old shit. These two guys could go and put on matches that were absolutely fucking incredible. It was like a breath of fresh air um, in wrestling. And, and and the thing is, they had a series of matches at like various pay per views. Every single match was different, and every single match it told a story, and it was fantastic in a different way. And and I mean, I I was familiar with Shawn Michaels. Obviously, he did amazing things. I seen him wrestle every fucking person on the roster. But he 
it was a, it was Shawn Michaels at a different level. That is my favorite Shawn Michaels memory. There you go. What about you, Chach? Um, I I have a list. Like I can't I can't really decide, uh, between them. But I mean, yeah, the ladder matches with Razor Ramon. Um, we just rewatched that one from uh, WrestleMania. Yeah. Um. Uh, retiring Ric Flair. Mm-hmm. And probably uh, the WrestleMania where he fought Undertaker and he had Jesus in his corner. <laughs> like he, he showed up in all white and everything was good versus evil. And yeah. Excellent. Wheels? Wow. My favorite moment. Chachi named a few, but my one of my most favorite was basically. The breaking out of Shawn Michaels and what some should would say the barbershop moment of throwing Marty Jannetty through the plate glass and then the birth of the heartbreak kid, Shawn Michaels. Also would be the first WWF title win. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Excellent. I think that's everybody, right? And uh, chat room if you want to play along if you haven't already. Um, but uh, thank you, Wrestle Fan. Well, no problem. And that was our little segment that we like to call Remember When. Hmm. Excellent. Uh, I think, and uh, No Man Mike, uh, Man of the Mayhem this week doing some technical issues with his phone. Uh, so we'll get right into uh, some of the discussion. Uh, first of all, uh, people using social media in, in the internets, uh, Kurt Angle. Be involved in making my movie. Donate $15 or more at address here, tiny or whatever. I will follow you on Twitter. Please retweet. I believe some of you had some responses to this. I did. Yeah? He didn't respond. <laughs> what was your response? Uh, he, he sent that. Someone retweeted it. And I said, tell you what. You give me $15 and I'll follow your ass on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> no. he, I, I don't know. He, uh, I, I hate to bash on somebody for using Twitter wrong. He's not being well. He kind of can be a dick sometimes on Twitter, um, but that'll happen. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Every once in a while, I just scratch my head when I see Kurt Angle on Twitter. I'm sorry. I'm not paying anyone to follow me on Twitter. I don't know if they. they I don't know if he understands the value of that. No. You know, I. It doesn't. It doesn't matter that you follow me. It matters that you at reply me more than anything. Me yeah. just interacting with him on Twitter is worth more than him than him following me back. Right. I just paid fifteen dollars for Kurt Angle to be my friend. <laughs> is that what just happened? No, you paid fifteen dollars for Kurt Angle to pretend to be your friend. Man, this feels like this feels like that time Road Dog was selling uh, time with him on eBay. Oh, <laughs> yeah. He's doing wait, so much better. Uh, now. Wait, wait a minute, did you wait get to pick what you did with that? I time? don't know. I can't remember. It was a while ago. Well, that's kind of funny you say it, that, Sword. But, why's that? Because uh, I was looking on my YouTube, and Matt Hardy is selling shout-outs for $100. <laughs> really? Really? Really. For $100! I can I, get a, I, I, I can I, get a promo. Worst, why? You know what the worst part is? Hmm. Some 15-year-old girl that's... Decked with Hardy Boy post- posters in a room would probably pay that much. Yeah, yeah, probably. That's the sad people that already have that I, I mean, I'm looking. He's, and they're not long promos or shout outs. I'm like, hundred dollars. You better be doing kicks and cooking dinner and let me watch you and Rebby do something for a hundred bucks. Or, or at hundred least, like, bucks. A, at least have a video of me telling you how fat you are. For a hundred <laughs> bucks, you better be undoing his fly and wiggling his. Tiny, no, tiny little, no. tiny, have- tiny little penis. Why don't you go make that recommendation, Chach? Bring the monkey. <laughs> to, to Matt Hardy? On, on he probably Twitter, eat it. On Twitter? Mm-hmm. Is he on Twitter? Does Matt Hardy know how to use Twitter? Well, he, well, oh, yeah. uh, I'm going to say he's <laughs> on Twitter. Whether he knows how to use it, I think is another story. <laughs> I, I found it. I found it. It's at shopmatthardy.com. Uh, Matt Hardy, shout outs. Wow. Hello, Kathy. Hello, Chris. What's up, Trey? It's your boy, Matt Hardy. Very, very good friend of yours. Has hooked you up 
with a Matt Hardy shout out. You are the recipient what? of a special Matt Hardy shout out, courtesy of Shan. I'm gonna give you a shout out. Oh yeah, and she's told me all your deepest dark secrets, even your inside joke. You know that monkey in the refrigerator? Kathy, I wanna remind you, to achieve, you have to believe, and always dare to dream. Happy birthday to you. I got nothing but love and respect for you, my man. Happy sweet 16, Pam. Congratulations on your graduation. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Toby. Chris, I wanna say hello. I hope you're doing well. I know you're a wonderful person, and you're a fellow North Carolinian. Hello, Bob. Matt Hardy here, and I have a very special shout out for you. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. I think you get the just... idea. Okay, Wait, that's on, enough time of that out. right there. I want, you to, I want you to go to YouTube right now. Okay. And look up Pittsburgh Dad. Okay. <laughs> so this reminds me of the time you tried to send that uh, e that TNA E card of Mick Foley saying something to Chachi. Yeah, I'm supposed to wish him a happy never... birthday for Mick Foley. But wasn't that like 99 cents? Yeah. It was it, like six bucks. It didn't well, work. Well, yeah, not a hundred fucking dollars. <laughs> Fuck. Man. Okay, you have it ready? Uh, what, what, just anything from Pittsburgh Dad? Any of the episodes. Any of the episodes. Pittsburgh Dad, 4th of July. I want you to listen to the music. Okay. It's the same. It's always... Oh, that's a commercial. That's a commercial, sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, why, why, is it the same music? You know there's like stock music. This I know. Is a thing, wait, right? wait, wait, wait for it. All right, hold on, hold on. <laughs> hey, you better think... not be lighting black snakes on my walk and stain it all up. He's that block of wood back there. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Ah, uh, no, we ain't lighting fireworks off yet. It's still so, light Pittsburgh out. Dad is Matt Hardy. Hardy. <laughs> That's really depressing. That's right. A wow. little bit, a little bit. Yeah. I heard the music and I'm like, I've heard that before. And at first I thought it was baristas and I was wrong. No, that's not baristas. Yeah. I, I was just, I was sitting there racking my brain. I'm like, oh, I know what it is. <laughs> awesome. All right. Um, so there's that. Uh, well, you mentioned earlier uh, the touts uh, from, from last night on Raw. Um, yeah. I, well, Mad Mike's an anti tout guy. And he dug it. Now, what are you anti? No, you're spanking the monkey. I'm spanking the monkey. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sorry. Is that an illustration? That well, that's worth no, no. Bucks. They they did touting right. Yeah, yeah. I, they furthered the storyline. Exactly. Well we, we done. Had, we had Seamus touting from his stolen car, <laughs> uh, making uh, which was ra amazing. Racist food stops for burritos, uh, going wow. to the Alamo, everything like that. Can we? Have we oh, touched on burger, which I'm really excited about? Have we uh, have we touched on how racist WWE is nowadays? It is as like a point, you know. I mean, there's oh, no apology yeah. for that. I mean, that, that's the wrestling is based on races. Is no, based what, on uh, stereotypes. There, there, okay, but there's there's no reason you can't evolve, you know, <laughs> and not be yes, racist. yes, there is. Yeah, wrestling fans. <laughs> There's some wrestling fans that aren't, you know. It's super a yes, but the lowest just, cut, you don't get a three point two eight whatever average rating by by not uh, uh, you know speaking the lowest common denominator out there, and that's that's what WWE does. That's why it's like so bland to some of us wrestling fans sometimes because they're going for the people that that appeals to. A lot of people in their audience probably laugh at that or they're offended enough by it that they're going to keep watching and look for the next thing they're offended by. <laughs> yeah. So so it's it's the racist like like let's get to the little kids and the racist fans. Yes, I mean well, hey, look at <laughs> look look at RWA. There was a wife beater angle. True that. And I believe there was <laughs> was there was there a racist angle, or am I just thinking that fact that we discovered a couple months ago that all the heels are black? <laughs> no, that was just us. That no, was just I mean, us? Okay, that was no, no, okay, that's not even a thing. Okay, the, only, um, the only thing I don't get is that, you know, they have to apologize for AW making a comment about uh, uh, Co the Kobe Bryant comment. Yes. They have to apologize for Tensai doing that racist pat with Sakamoto. They have to apologize for all the heels doing it. Yes. But when Sheamus makes racist jokes... Or when Jerry Lawler makes a joke about Sakamoto that his new name should be something wrong. <laughs> okay, I think there's, there's no I think problem there's, with no, no, that. No, no, no. I think there's a certain level of of racism or cultural jokes here that's happening. Eating a burrito 
I mean, that's one okay. thing. You well, know, it's fine. not like but he, use the, it's not like use he, the Jerry Lawler example. Okay, okay. You know when Jerry Lawler said that Vince McMahon was in the back laughing his dick off. Yeah. Right. Also, I, I, also, I, I'm pretty sure there's no Mex- Mexicans in the uh, uh, in the contingency for uh, Connecticut's election, so that will be a little <laughs> less uh, of that's a point. True. So, but it's, I do find it because they have to appalled. I don't get why they have to appalled. Uh, maybe it's just coincidence, but they're apologizing when heels do it. I feel like for heels it would be easier because they're just like, well, they're heels. Vince McMahon said the N word on TV once. <laughs> Vince yeah. McMahon said the N word and it wasn't Ninja. <laughs> okay, I you don't know think it's pretty bad when you can't even say the N word. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Even though LB completely said it earlier, he did. He did. I, that that did may have happened. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. But Vince you know McMahon what? That's said okay. the N word. Because I'm a ninja and I accepted it. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, Thank I, you. I, Thank I, you. I appreciate that. Plus, it was a quote. It was a quote. <laughs> it was a quote. Um, no, I, I I don't think. I think you're making too much. Wrestle fan, it's wrestling. Oh, okay, fine, whatever. Can we can, can we transition to another story Nerd, about people saying please? What, 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 what's that? <laughs> Go ahead. What do you want to transition to? Oh, can we transition to a story about other people saying stupid shit? Sure. Kevin Nash, ladies and gentlemen. What did he say? What did he say, Russell fan? He did a, he did an interview with somebody, and I. This is a direct quote, and he I don't know what it's something about what was the end of the bit. I I don't know how the question came about. But this is the direct quote. And it gets really, like, why would someone say that to hilarious why would someone say that? So just just bear with me here. Uh, this is the quote from Kevin Nash. When Benoit and Guerrero hugged, uh, referring to WrestleMania 20, that was the end of the business. Has business been the same since that WrestleMania? Has it come close to the Austin era? Has it come close to the NWO or the Hogan era? You put two fucking guys that were great workers that were the same height as the fucking referees, and I'm sorry, man. And and that's horrible, and that's so a horrible way to think. But then it gets really funny. Are you going to watch a porno movie with a guy with a three-inch dick? Even if you're not gay, you will not watch a porno movie with a guy with a three-inch dick. That's not the standard in porno films. So put a five-foot-seven guy as your world champion. Huh. <laughs> Kevin Nash, ladies and Kevin gentlemen. Kevin Nash, ladies and gentlemen. Kevin Nash. Um, well, first of all, he's been saying this for years, even before yeah, either of them died or anything. He says that was the end of the business because nobody's going to believe that because he he thinks that guys that size are not believable. Refers and to them. As, refers to them as vanilla midgets and exactly, exactly. And that's his opinion. You know, um, that that's the opinion of anybody that came from an era. Where the big guy was king, you know. Uh, wait a minute. Wait, wait, okay, so there's those guys. How much bigger is Shawn Michaels than those guys? Exactly. I mean, Shawn not, Michaels not is much. a little. What's that? Not much. Not much. No, no. And exactly. the thing is, like, is he like five nine or five ten or something? He, he might be six foot. You know. I mean, it, Michaels is not a big guy. And I, you can say the argument that little people or smaller people winning the big one. At, at a consistent basis, and he also refers to Punk and Daniel Bryan now, is not believable. You can't say that was the end of the business. No, no. I mean, really? I, really? You guys going on all these shoot interviews, like talking all this, you know, crap about all this stuff backstage, the finger poke of doom. This all is, the, this is the end of business because you're not making millions of dollars doing half ass shit like you did in the 90s. Yeah, yeah. he's got to go strip in a weird. Channing Tatum movie, which I hear is really good. I really want to see that just for the fact of Kevin Na- the Kevin Nash appearance. There better not that's be not any a, short dicks in that movie. Mm. Yeah, no <laughs> one's gonna believe that movie if there's a two inch cock <laughs> coming from a seven foot guy. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay, Super Cheddar, keep it up. Um, and Ciro saying that that's HB- what she said. Uh, <laughs> Ciro's two K saying that HBK <laughs> is in fact six one. So. Okay. Whatevs. Guys, it's ah, whatever. Whatever. Um, I don't even know where to go from there. Poor people saying stupid stuff. That's no, uh, that's up there with uh, Hogan and Balls Deep. 
Just throwing yeah. it off. By there. the way, I love that Are You Serious is making references to his sex video. So, oh my uh, God, I laughed hysterically mm-hmm. when I saw that. See, like, wow. they said, this is the worst thing that did, that wasn't uh, filmed in Night Shot. <laughs> oh, it was great. I I, I, I love that. That's that's like that's like uh that's like WWE's calling card to inside wrestling jokes everywhere. It, it's like uh, you know never mind, I'm not making that reference. Uh let's move <laughs> on then. Let's move on then. Um Hey, there's more wrestling coming from WWE. Excited yeah. guys? First of all, I don't know if we oh, talked yeah. about before this WWE main event is gonna be on Ion, uh which uh I'm excited because both these uh, shows coming up are on programs that I get over the air here in Pittsburgh, which means everybody's going to be able to get them. Uh, so there's WWE main event, which I don't know. There's many details. I think it sounds like it's another uh, superstars or something. Um, but there's going to be a new uh, WWE's uh, uh, Saturday morning show that will air on the CW again an over the air uh, uh, network, which in some places it might actually show Ring of Honor as well. Uh, over hmm, the I think weekend. so. Because I think Sin- Sinclair doesn't just own, like, here, I know it's a My Pittsburgh station, uh, but they own other channels of other affiliates, like, I think, like, CBS's and CW's uh, Which, across the nation. So there might be something interesting going on there. that could be interesting, and that could be, like, a block. That's, like, you know how we see, like, blocks of cartoons. We could see blocks of wrestling because... That'd be cool. At least, at least in my area, I don't know if it's in general for the CW, mm-hmm. if this new WWE show... Ring of Honor, and they're also showing Lucha Libre USA. At least in, at really? least in my area. Really? Wow! I they would show Lucha Libre USA right after Ring of Honor. I'll have to check out. Uh, I'll have to check out my local listing because I only knew about Ring of Honor on our local one. Um, but th- wow, that'd be they're, really they're older cool. Episodes, and CW, but they, well, that's also interesting because CW does do Saturday morning cartoons still. Like they're the only ones. They still have, I think, the four kids block. And it's all it's all like Japanese shit, but um, it's mm-hmm. you know so if they're if they're gonna be lumping this in with that, that that's gonna be a really it'll be just like the good old days. I was um, gonna say this will remind us of our childhoods. <laughs> exactly. I mean, you know, you watch your Saturday morning cartoons, and then Wrestling Challenge comes on. That'll be great. <laughs> You know, I don't know if me, this is a good give, idea. Give me not. a Sunday morning program right <laughs> after the church programs, and I'm freaking sold. What's that, Chach? I don't know if this is a good idea or not. Why? They just added another hour of programming. But this is like no. more programming. Uh, okay, think about it this way. The kids aren't staying up for, through three hours of wrestling on Monday I'm night. I'm not staying up for exactly. three hours of wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> nope. So this is another venue for them to try to sell pay-per-views, merchandise, etc. And the kids sitting there through, uh, you know, six hours of commercials on Saturday morning anyways. I don't know. Kids still do that? Still, uh, I don't know. Um, I have, oh, God, I hope but so. But still... It's more programming, so they make more money. This is the program's uh, being slated as they say it's going to be like the old Live Wire show um, that they had in the '90s, is according to the uh, WrestleZone report uh, by uh, uh, Justin Labar. The no- new program hasn't been given an official name yet, uh, but they've narrowed it down to three or four. Uh, I expect that it'll, it'll feature uh, social media interaction, interviews, storyline recaps, and an original match will be taped uh, prior to Raw or SmackDown earlier in the week. So. Think Livewire. Think about this is the place. I, I, I don't know who has come his conversation with earlier, um, but think about this is your social media show. This is like the tout feature program, you know, right. more so. And they can do it more interactive than the Livewire thing. Um, they can really push that, you know. And to the kids or, you know, wh- whoever just flips to it on, on Saturday morning, that's I think that's going to come over, come off pretty good. I'll watch it. I'll, I'll yeah. DVR it or something, or, or it'll be nice to be able to get up and turn on wrestling when I'm sleeping in Saturday morning when that actually happens. Um, <laughs> so uh, I, I don't know. I'm kind of excited by the idea of this old concept kind of coming back mixed with the new. So what do you guys think of this? I agree. It, remind, it reminds me of the days where like I couldn't sleep at night and like 3 a.m. I would watch WWE Raw AM with Ivory hosting it. And it was just like recap I videos. Agree. Exactly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what about but you? Yeah, I, I, oh, I think ahead. it could be a new venture, and I think it could be something interesting uh, for them. Mm-hmm. I, and, and this is something that I'm sure is also going to be shot around to other other um, um, uh, na- nations, uh, other nations, uh, other oh. other other markets, other international markets. Because I, I, you know, some watch Raw the way some of us do. You may notice that Afterburn is still a show hosted by Matt Stryker. 
Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I discovered that this week. Um, NXT is still, I, I believe, being shopped around. Like, even when it was on the internet here, it was on, like, prime time before Raw in other markets or somewhere else in other markets. But you've got to, I mean, it's, yeah, I think NXT has to be on other markets because they're not showing it on WWE.com anymore. No, they're not. I think they're just showing it locally, but they're still, they're still shopping it around. Otherwise. And they actually have a championship belt for NXT. Yeah, yeah. I haven't watched much interesting. of it. I really haven't watched much of it yet, but I want to. I understand, interesting. I understand I, I Ryback's it. going to NXT. Oh, boy. Um, he'll, he'll kill like four people at the same time. It'll be, it'll be <laughs> great. Uh, <laughs> hey, Ciro's saying that the new NXT is awesome. And I, if I'm not mistaken, Ciro's from down in Florida where it's shown. So um, it's kind of it's very much like an indie show in the fact that it's like all wrestling matches. You know, I do I, wonder. I, I, I'm sorry. I, I do wonder about it being too early to socially interact with WWE. Is this thing going to be live? I doubt it. I, so I think doubt this it. is going to be it'll it'll be tweets through the week or tweets that they glazed off the raw. Oh, that was the one idea. Think about the raw day after that they have on uh, on on WWE.com <laughs> that a few of us have gotten tweets on. Uh, think of think of it as raw day after the show. Hmm. Yeah, like they'll feature the best tweets that came out, you know, over Raw, day after reaction, SmackDown reactions, maybe, so, you know, stuff and like that. And, and stuff like that. You, know what, you know what? I wish they would. You know what? I wish they would bring back. And I, I, I they're kind of doing it on YouTube in a okay. way mm-hmm. with you know the, some of the stuff. I miss WWE Confidential. Does yeah. anyone remember that? Yeah, I love that one. Gene yeah. Okerlin uh, was on. Gene Okerlin, and there it. was always about them either going to like media events or like past moments in wrestling or mm-hmm. you know certain certain stuff it was really intriguing it I had think- the feel of a lot of stuff you get now with the um a lot of the dvds are the same feel the documentary format you know um it was like more realistic it was more behind the scenes kind of stuff it, it was it was a really good program and they actually released a couple of uh, dvds one or two dvds maybe of like a best of confidential mm-hmm. so i remember that was a good saturday night watching Oh yeah, definitely. So, I uh, and WWE's always like had a history of experimenting with different kinds of programming over the years. I mean, we had Shotgun Saturday nights, we had uh, primetime wrestling, we had uh, you know TNT Tuesday Night Titans, which has the most yeah, interesting heat. skits. Heat Velocity for a while there. Heat when Heat first started, it was like a music program. Um, the, I, I still remember like the best the best moment out of Heat was one of the it may have been the very first episode where they featured the Hell in a Cell match with Mick Foley and Taker and they did it to uh, this was a great song by a band that I don't think went anywhere called Virgos Merlot I bought the CD after that one right you know? <laughs> and, and it was a lot of just like kind of looking back at certain things in, in WWF E whatever it was at the time and set to music and they did it for I don't know maybe about two months and it became what we really know he has now. I love I love how minimalized the WWE like lineup was. Like say back in like two thousand one and like two thousand two, where it was Raw, SmackDown, Heat, which was like the minor show, and then like Metal or Jacked, and those which was like the mi- which was like the Jacked minor show of the minor K's. show. Yeah, and those and those were like those were what replaced what we remember as wrestling challenge and superstars. Those were the syndicated shows, which ended up being maybe they had a few extra matches like we see on superstars or in this new main event show. Uh, but it was mostly just recaps. I mean, everything they have out there was just focused around what happened on Raw. That's why I left wrestling for the longest time because all I had was over the air stuff, and I didn't have even the option of cable. And I and and everything was obviously happening on Raw and pay per views and. You know, I, I couldn't care anymore about watching the Brooklyn Brawler job to somebody again every week. Yeah, yeah I know? was on the same spot. I mean, I was trying to keep up through WWE magazine and because I didn't have cable and I didn't have Raw and it just wasn't cutting the mustard. Exactly, exactly. So. I would visit like my grandparents in Pittsburgh that had this amazing cable that comes to their home that delivers wrestling on Monday nights, you know, <laughs> you know, and even before even before it was Raw, they had some other program that was like. It was. I just remember this one where it was like uh, I want to say it was probably Gorilla Monsoon and, and Bobby the Brain Heenan in a studio yes, with audience Monsoon. members, and I guess they went to matches or something. But it was it was really weird. I didn't even know what the program was. It might have been the old primetime wrestling, or or wasn't there like a USA wrestling program they had for a while there too? Like I, I don't know it, it, their relationship. With, I, I was just blind to all that before like 1995. What USA had for wrestling, so but. With that, okay, what else we got here, guys? Uh, what else is worth talking about uh, that we got here? Hmm. 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 
Mm. So SummerSlam's coming up. So SummerSlam's coming up. <laughs> Hardcore Justice is Hardcore coming up. Justice is this weekend, actually. Really? Yeah, uh, how about that? Fuck. <laughs> hey, you know, is there, there's actually some good stuff on here. One, they're actually doing some quasi-hardcore stipulation matches here. Um, so let, let, let's touch on that real quick. First, Shima Zion, or I'm sorry, Zima Ion, uh, is facing Kenny King for the X Division title. Should be a great match. Uh, rematch between, of course, Bobby Roode and uh, Austin Aries. Um, they're having... I think these are uh, Bound for Glory matches, technically. Right. Uh, there's three uh, Bound for Glory four-way matches that are all... So it has all 12 participants involved. There is a tables match with, I think it's like Jeff Hardy, James Storm, Robbie E, and Bully Ray, I think. Mm -hmm. um, there's like a Falls Count Anywhere match. I think it's Rob Van Dam, Mr. Anderson, The Pope, and someone else. And, uh, but, uh, um, and then there's a ladder match with AJ Styles, Kurt Angle, Samoa Joe, and Christopher Daniels. I think that's a good concept. I mean, it, 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 it goes along with hardcore justice. It, mm -hmm. it does something with the Bound for Glory. Everybody has an equal opportunity. That's great. Uh, I, was, I was more annoyed last year when they built it as hardcore justice. They built it as fewer discretion and vibes, and there was no hardcore matches. Yeah. And there yeah. was one spot with a table, and that was it. Yeah, yeah. That, that was, I don't. How do you do that? You know. Yeah. Um, Gunner and K Kid Cash are going to take on uh, Guerrero and Hernandez. That should be interesting as well. Uh, good to see Guerrero in there. Um, we're going to have. So wait a minute. Wait. Wait. I'm sorry. Yes? You just said a match that kind of brought a thought to my mind of WWE. What? Isn't this a racist match? The Mexicans versus the little Southern redneck boy. Yeah, they are Southern. Yeah, that, that does. That does kind of... Uh, uh -huh. It's stereotypes. Wrestling stereotypes, man. No. This show's my, stereotypes, my point, damn it. You're wrestling. from Canada or something. Wheels likes chicken uh, and so does <laughs> LB. I mean, that's that's I what this is. Love chicken. I love white, chicken. That one I guy love was chicken. Russian. That's true. That's true. <laughs> mm. um, uh, then Knockouts Championship, Madison Rain, Miss Taskmaker. And uh, th so it looks like a decent enough show. Uh, so go check that out this weekend. It's uh, if you'd like to TNAwrestling.com for more information. <laughs> if you'd like to, if you, I don't know. There's a lot of very fuck TNA people out there that uh, listen to this show. Uh, so, so I, I don't like, mind it. I will they, give you the they option. Put on, they put on some good wrestling on Impact. They do. The AJ, they do. The AJ Styles pregnancy storyline is stupid. It is. I wish they did that already. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the thing you suffer through to get to the rest of the show. I, I was I watched Impact uh, earlier today. I thought it was fine. You know, it was wrestling. I, I, it was wrestling to put on. You know, yeah. I'm happy with that, you know? Um, don't expect much out of it. Come on. And if you're going to be pregnant, wear the same pregnancy suit. Because your belly keeps growing different sizes each week. Why is it sideways yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody check on that baby. <laughs> there was an episode of Arrested like, Development TNA. about that, wasn't there? You don't no. grow a baby bump in the matter of like a week. I'm okay. pregnant. Whoop! It's like, <laughs> no, no. What's that, trash? She bought it on eBay. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Exactly. She exactly. Buy, but she couldn't buy the ability to cry on eBay. <laughs> you, 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 you mean act? Period. You can get Matt Hardy to give her uh, acting lessons. There you go. <laughs> for a hundred dollars. There you go. In a there ten second go. clip. Either way, um, and Raw was fine. SmackDown. Oh, we don't talk about SmackDown on this show. That's right. Oh. Some people. Um, no, you know, the SmackDown was fine, too. You know, uh, Antonio Cesaro is the reason I watch SmackDown now. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Uh, and, uh, yeah. And I think that's also about Also, Damian Sandow, because he gives no fucks. There he goes. He is your martyr, sir. Although, it looks like he's coming up on Raw a bit more than anything. So Yeah, which is, which is I, really good. Have I, have I complained a little bit on here? Yeah, well, I guess I have. Um, <laughs> <laughs> specifically about um, why do we have these guys coming on with Raw and SmackDown logos on their names? Because right. they're still why, signed. Why? They're still signed to different I, rosters. The Super Show. We don't even say Super Show anymore, do we? Yeah. No, yeah. they do changed it completely. Oh. Yeah, yeah that, it's not even. It's just like, yeah, we're merged and we yeah. just kind of meh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not even a uh, drafter anymore, so just put WWE. No, no. I mean, the only thing is, like, these guys are 
Like, I think Sheamus showed up as being a Raw superstar with the world belt. Seriously? Which, which I, I, like, if you look at WWE's roster page, Sheamus is in the SmackDown section. Mm-hmm. But I love how the cha- the champions in the SmackDown section are Sheamus and Layla. <laughs> All the minor ti- the Intercontinental titles Raw, U.S. titles Raw, what? WWE titles Raw, tag titles is Raw. I don't, I, I don't think they can even tell anymore. I, I understand the distinction that these are the guys that are going to show up on the live shows, probably, when, you, like, SmackDown Raw house shows come to your town. But other than that, you know, really, I, I don't know. Um, it, it just it just meshed together. So, um, And with that, I, I think it's a good point to wrap out, up on. So let's go with uh, uh, what what you guys learned from wrestling this week. Ooh, ooh, I think, ooh, oh, we ooh, got, ooh, he's, got his, he's got his hand up. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. Well, first of all, your hair is all messed up. You've been playing with a monkey all night. It, what is going on over I there? I am drained. I've been up since four thirty. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm. Are okay. you having an early week at work this week? It, it ends tomorrow. Like I go to work at a normal time tomorrow. Nice. So is I've the, been up. Since, God bless you. Me. I've oh been up goodness, since four thirty this morning. Thank I'm you. fucking exhausted. I had to go I stretch my was, legs, but... or I was gonna fall asleep. Not because of you guys, just because I'm fucking tired. But this week in wrestling, I learned that crazy is not AJ safe word. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. Awesome. I had uh, to get it out before I forgot. That's Hot, what she said. Hot Wheels, what'd you learn from wrestling this week? What did I learn? I learned that Seamus, though Irish and almost clear, can drive in a, a very expensive Ferrari and enjoys Mexican, but it doesn't enjoy him. <laughs> Wait, did he poop on the... It looked like he shit on the, all over his car. On the front of the car? What was going on there? <laughs> oh, man. This just in. Uh-oh. If you pre-order WWE 13 at GameStop in North America, you get the CM Punk ice cream bar shirt for the character in game. Oh, or oh damn. Just wait and you can download it later. <laughs> just <laughs> put it out there. Sorry. We just put it down. Go ahead. All right, uh wrestle fan? Uh I learned in wrestling this week. It's a crazy crazy world cuz nobody uh is is who they should be. CM Punk's up really a face with he should be a heel. Big Show's a face when he should be a heel. Sheamus is a heel. Uh, Brock Lesnar's pretty much a face in the storyline with Triple H. Like, it's wacky and crazy, and you should be watching. <laughs> All right. Awesome. LB. Uh, I learned that uh, the best way to make uh, Bo Diggity freak out is also the best way to make me gag. Ray Mysterio. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Hey, do ah. not make fun of my friend. I'm not. Dude, I keep you him. weren't in the hangout. Uh, Ray Mysterio was the the opponent selected for CM Punk, and he fucking flipped out. <laughs> I keep Ray Mysterio also, in a desk drawer at work. Also, also, oh, I side note: about I learned I learned from wrestling that WWE does not listen to any of us. <laughs> <laughs> there was no Punk Bateman. There was no punk. Oh, and, uh, I favorited like and, twenty and, and, and of double those. Double meat pizza that uh, AJ posted. You know, I can't wait for the day where where something that's a non-selection like that becomes the trending topic. Mm-hmm. The yeah. day is going to come, and that's going to be we the thing I learned from Twitter, wrestling. Twitter. We all have to join forces. Exactly. We have to decide on one person that is in all these hashtag things, so we can get it to trend. And also, please let it be Derek Bateman because, uh, goddamn it, he deserves no, it. I think I think you'd have a good chance of getting a, a like a, a like in that instance a hashtag punk rider. Uh, my yes. my favorites, uh, punk May Young Son Thumb War, <laughs> <laughs> uh, punk Seven Daleks, <laughs> uh, punk Ostrich, and punk Meat Lovers Pizza. <laughs> and this is exactly what I'm talking about, too, that these, these side things that come from their social media efforts are going to be the thing that entertains us and the fans of this show. Yes. Like this. This is our, our thing. Like we've created our own community around it even more on top of their community. So and they don't care because we're still watching. We're talking about it. We're, we're, we're tweeting about it, even if it isn't completely what they want and put on TV. 
So, all right, with that, guys, it's been your Wrestling Mayhem show. Uh, hey, props out the man child that uh, posted that other video from Phoenix Pro Wrestling on my personal Facebook page. Go check that out. We tweeted it here earlier tonight uh, at Mayhem Show, and it's on the Facebook and Google Plus as well. Um, so shout outs to them. Uh, check us out at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. We're on iTunes, Blip TV, Wait. Roku, and Stitcher. We Wait. forgot to chat room. Chat room? Yes. Oh, chat room. Did oh. They learn things? oh, I'm sorry. From the chat room, Ciro also learned that the new intro song sounds so similar to Mrs. Theme. Uh, Bobby learned that Manchild and Luke Gallows are going to change the face of bullying in Johnstown and that Kane is Bane. Also, Z Be a star! Oh, I forgot about the Kane Bane We stuff. will have to do something with the Kane is Bane thing. Um, also, Ziggler versus Jericho needs to happen at SummerSlam. Also, Brock Lesnar is still a human shark. Also, it's Shark Week. Um, and Sarah also <laughs> learned that Seamus steals cars and, and shits, shits in them. them. Uh, we're here live. You can join us like these <laughs> chat room guys have uh, every Tuesday night, round about 8.30 p.m. Eastern or so, live.suckertronmedia.com. You can also email us at Good times. Good, times. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. 412-206-WBS0 is the, uh, is the uh, uh, voicemail oh, hotline. You can uh, check out WMS Gold on the iOS App Store and Amazon App Store for your Android phone. Uh, it's $1.99. Special interview with Hot Wheels. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that. I'm Sorgatron for Ch at Chachi Says, at DJ Lunchbox, at The Wrestle Fan, and at Hot Wheels RWA. This it's has been your Mayhem you Show. Follow us on Instagram and stuff, too. Usually it's the same names. Uh, follow <laughs> us on Tout. Follow us on the Facebooks. Follow us on all that stuff. Interact with us, all of you out there. And we will interact back with you. We will interact back with price. you. Not for a price. I will give you a shout out. Hey, I'll give you a promo for free. I don't give a fuck. For 50 bucks, I will tweet only you for four hours. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Set up the PayPal now. Thank you, guys. Chat room, everybody. Audience, mayhem out. <laughs> <laughs>